You are listening to Native Stories. This is Carrie Morin. Oh, oh somebody's here. Hold on. Hey. Hey. Come on in. Yeah, it's, it's kind of dark. Um, yeah. Oh, go lay down. Go lay down. Go. Sorry. Oh, well, thanks for coming over. The creation story of the Crow Indians. Old Man Coyote gazed across the water and felt lonely. The sea stretched to the horizon in every direction. It is bad to be alone, Coyote thought. As he stretched his neck to scan the endless gray sea, Coyote saw two red-eyed ducks paddling toward him. Eagerly, he asked them if they had seen anything in their travels. The ducks' eyes narrowed, and they looked this way and that. We haven't actually seen anything, elder brother, the first duck replied. But deep down in our hearts, we have wondered about what lies within the sea. Coyote was interested. Both you can swim and dive. Why don't you dive under the water and look? Perhaps there is something down there. If you find something, bring it up and we'll look at it. One duck stayed with Coyote while his companion dived into the sea. They waited for the little duck to return. Oh my, Coyote exclaimed after several minutes. My younger brother has probably drowned. He has gone too long. Don't worry, our brother will return. After a long time, the diver returned to the surface. He had something in his mouth. The two who were waiting rushed over to him, eager to see what he was carrying. I struck something hard down there, the duck reported. Coyote examined the object and determined that it was a piece of root, or perhaps a branch from a tree. Your hearts were right. There is something down there, all right, Coyote announced. He turned to the diving duck and said, Why don't you try again, and this time, try to find something soft. If you do, scoop it up in your bill and bring it back for us to see. The diving duck agreed and quickly disappeared beneath the surface once more. Again, Coyote began to worry that he had been gone too long, and again the other duck comforted him. Finally, they saw the diver swimming in their direction. Well, how did you make out? Do you have something? Coyote asked, nearly shouting with excitement. Yes, the duck replied. He had a lump of mud. Well, my younger brothers, Coyote said, this is something we can build with. The ducks were puzzled, but they waited as Coyote blew on the mud. Magically, it expanded in every direction and grew deep and firm. Within a few minutes, Coyote had made a large island. The ducks were amazed. Elder brother, they squealed. This is fine. Can you make it bigger? Again, Coyote blew on the earth, and again, it grew in all directions. Almost instantly, the island became as large as the earth is today. The three looked around and admired the brown prairie that stretched before them. Finally, one of the ducks said absently, It would be so much nicer if it weren't empty. Coyote reached down and picked up the root the duck had retrieved from the bottom of the sea. From that little scrap he made the grass, the trees, and all other plants we find on the earth. Again the three stood and admired Coyote's new creation. It's beautiful, the other ducks sighed, but it's so flat. If there were rivers here, they would dig valleys and cut canyons into the earth. Coyote scratched his grisly chin and nodded his head. You're right, he replied. The ducks stood in wonder. He pushed the earth around and arranged so that rivers flowed across the landscape. Now the ducks glowed with pleasure. This is perfect, they said. Who could imagine anything more? It was Coyote's turn to be dissatisfied. 
This is very beautiful, he agreed. The grass, the rivers, the trees, and the valleys stretching into the horizon. All of it is good. But I am lonely and bored. We need companions. Coyote scooped up a handful of earth and shaped it into men. The ducks were fascinated. Could you make companions for us, they said. Of course, Coyote said, and he made ducks in all varieties. Coyote looked with pleasure at his handiwork until he thought of something he had left out. If there were women, the men would be content, and they could multiply and grow strong. If there were female ducks, the male ducks too would be happy and plentiful. He took another handful of dirt and made women and female ducks. Then one day, old man Coyote met another coyote. My brother, he exclaimed, where did you come from? I don't know, the coyote replied, but here I am. Who are you? They call me Old Man Coyote. You are a coyote too, and you are my true brother. Come, let me show you around. The two coyotes traveled together across the earth until the newcomer asked Old Man Coyote, are there creatures other than the ones you have shown me? Why don't you make something new? I will, Coyote answered. The crow and their ancestors have inhabited the plains of central North America and present-day Montana for hundreds of years. It is a vivid world of grassy prairies, rivers, wildlife, and mountain forests. Throughout their history, they have believed themselves lucky to live in such beautiful homeland. Old Man Coyote, the ducks, and the power they brought to the earth have showered many blessings on the Crow people. Old Man Coyote said it best and most simply, it is good. medicine man, Thomas Yellowtail said, today what is important for us is to realize that the old sacred ways are correct and that if we do not follow them, we will be lost and without a guide. Thank you for listening to Native Stories. This is Carrie Morin. Thanks for stopping by. Mm-hmm.